Hey guys, Chris from Bod Squad here, how are you? Today I'd like you to use your imagination a little bit with me. We've got some imaginary muscles. This one's a small muscle. This one's a medium sized muscle. And we've got here a nice big muscle here. So some people have all three on different parts of their body. Some people have small muscles, some big, some Next medium. we've got imaginary body fat, a nice thin layer of body fat here in this sheet, so that would be covering us. A medium layer, that's not very medium but that's the best I could do. And some people have a thick layer of body fat that covers over them, all the way over them and even thicker sometimes and that's usually what we're all trying to get rid of. I just want to say straight away that muscles cannot turn to body fat if you stop working out and body fat cannot get turned into muscle. They're different parts and you work them differently. So we're going to work on losing some body fat and building maybe a little bit of muscle. So I don't know how well you're going to see this but there's all different combinations you can have. You can have small muscles with a thin layer of body fat covering it. You can just you can just see the muscle underneath there. You can have medium muscles with a thin layer of body fat or you can have big muscles with a thin layer. That would be a bodybuilder type where you can really see that muscle through there. Or, but I think what we're all aiming for is a medium size muscle um, with a medium to low body fat. So you just lean enough that you can see some muscle definition showing through but not so big and bulky, unless you like that sort of thing, but I think, you know, that's a really bulky muscle under there. I think most people are after that medium sized muscle with a medium to low body fat. We would call that look a toned body or a toned look. So let's discuss how we build a little bit of muscle and go from big thick layer of body fat to down to a medium or even a low. You build lean muscle mass, making small muscles into a little bit bigger by doing what we call resistance training. So that would be picking up a weight and working with the weight until it gets really hard or by lifting your own body weight. So that might be squats or push-ups off the ground or even crunches because you're lifting your own body off the ground and back on so that would still be known as resistance training and when you are doing that you are primarily working on building muscle. So I know people have this idea that they're going to do a million crunches, sit-ups, any sort of ab work and burn the body fat off from the middle of their body. That isn't the case. What they're doing is building some muscle. Although these um, abdominal muscles won't get really big, they'll get stronger. Um, so you're working on building the muscle there by doing crunches. Um, you haven't really done a lot to affect the body. How do we go from you know, a thick layer, we can all relate to that, can't we? That thick, feel like you're carrying that extra thick layer. And how do we take this to the medium sized layer or even this nice thin layer of body fat here so that we can see all those muscles show through. Well, we do that, we work on uh, losing body fat by burning calories. So uh, to lose a kilo of weight, we need to burn up 7,000 calories. Yes, you heard me right, 7,000. So what we really need to do is to change our nutrition, to take in a little bit less calories, and to move more and exercise more and burn up more calories. So the general rule is half comes from nutrition and half comes from exercise. When so, people want to do crunches to burn body fat, fat from around here, we're really trying to burn calories. So to do, say, 100 crunches, you might burn, say, 20 calories. When you think that you have to burn 7,000 to lose one kilo, and that's not really much in the scheme of things. So by all means, don't stop your resistance work because it increases your metabolism. Um, it's going to give you that nice um, muscle tone that we want to show through, but you have to be burning the calories and be taking in a little bit less calories if we want to work on what goes, what covers the muscle, and we get that nice, you know, thin, thinner, smaller 
layer of body fat to cover. So us. now we know how to burn body fat, we have to burn up more calories than we put in. So we do the right thing, we put in less calories, we get moving, we huff and puff, we exercise a little bit. So how do we know where that body fat is going to come from? Unfortunately, the bad news is you've got no control over that. Your genetics um, will determine if it's going to come off from your arms or your belly or your butt or your neck or wherever. So hormones do play a little part in that. So if you're particularly stressed, you probably hold it around the middle. Um, if you're going through menopause, you might hold it around the middle a little bit more. Um, also foods that you eat. So if you eat highly refined carbs or sugary foods, you might hold it around the middle more so. But other than that, if you're in a calorie deficit, you're going to burn body fat from wherever. So sorry guys, if you wanted to burn it from one spot, it doesn't happen.